Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nathan East. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video, as the title says above, is another reading blog. And there's probably a week gap in between when this video is posted um, or at the time of me recording this video where I didn't have any videos up. Just because this is the week of me having to really crack down on my sermon. It is currently Monday, November 18th, 12.52pm. And um, this week is going to be a little hectic. I need to do a lot of stuff to prepare for this coming Sunday. I have to preach at a... Um, I don't like saying preach. I have to speak at a youth service um, this coming Sunday at a different ministry. Which is going to be my first out of ministry experience. Um, I was also asked, too, to speak at a youth conference next year, which is insane, um, how things are, like, working and how God is moving in my life concerning ministry. Um, so I'm excited, nervous, but excited at the same time. My sermon is only going to be about 30 minutes long because the, the service is only two hours. So I'm going to try to keep it to 30 minutes, maybe 45, but I'm going to try to keep it down to 30 minutes. Um, and, yeah, I have three three things of note, three pages of notes already. I'm currently working on a sermon writing blog as I'm recording this video as well, so that should be up soon as well, but reading blog for today. I'm so stoked to be reading this book. I'm sad at the same time because this might be the Biblical Fiction Buffs book club pick for the winter, which is kind of sad, but I have to read it this month because it's a full review that's actually due Friday. Um, so that's going to be the end of The Magi by Patrick W. Carr. This book actually just came out November 5th, which... Yes, um, this cover is stunning, and I can't wait to read this, and just, oh, it's about the Magi era, which I'm so excited to learn more about. I've seen an anime, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like something with the Magis, and um, it was really, really good, really good. So I don't know much about Magi outside of anime, honestly, so I'm super excited to biblically learn about what a Magi is, but um, this one takes place around the time of the prophet Daniel. I don't know much about it, I just knew that... It sounded really interesting. It was biblical fiction. It took place with Daniel, and I did read a book about the prophet Daniel by Mesu Andrews, which I loved. And this, I believe, is a debut release. I, if I'm not mistaken, this is an actual debut release for this author. So I am stoked to read this book. Um, and again, it's called The End of the Magi, and I'm going to read the back of the book to give you guys some more information about it. So it says, centuries before the Magi arrived in Bethlehem, a prophecy sets a young Magus on his path. Following his vision of the coming Messiah, the prophet Daniel calls forth a select group of men who will count down the calendar until the arrival of Israel's promised king. Centuries later, as the day draws near, Myrad, a young Magi, Mag, I think it's Magi, or I don't know if it's Magi or Magi. I say Magi sometimes, so. Magi Acolyte flees for his life when his adoptive father and others are slain by a ruthless Prithi Parthian queen. I think that's how you say it, Parthian. Um, I'll put it on the screen, the word. But, yeah, so he flees for his life when his adoptive father and others are slain by a ruthless Parth Parthian queen. Equipped with very little in haste, Myred escapes the city and, searching for a way to hide from the soldiers scouring the trade routes, tries to join the caravan of the merchants, Wal Walagash. Walagash, that's his name, it's Walagash. Um, the merchant senses that Myrad is keeping secrets, so when the young man proves himself a valuable asset, an epic journey filled with peril, near captures, and dangerous battles begin. With every day that passes, the calendar creeps closer to the coming Messiah, and over everything shines the dream of a star that Myrad can't forget, and the promise that the world will never be the same. So, basically, around the prophet Daniel, around that era, right before Jesus was born type of stuff, super, super excited to dive in. I really find that these Old Testament biblical fictions really bring scripture alive, because for the New Testament, I can connect so much more with the new testament because it's like the new testament jesus is already here he spoke a word you got the disciples and the apostles and stuff like that the old testament is a little bit what you're talking about you're a little old don't know you but i still understand that the old testament still has some importance to my life even though i have the new testament so reading a lot of old testament stories um biblical fiction stories really help me and i love having my bible out at the same time i don't have my bible right now it's on my bookshelf I need to go get that in the midst of reading. But um, what I like to do is, I normally will stick to just using my phone, but sometimes I do always have my Bible out. 
and as I'm reading, if I find something that I think is a scripture, I type it into Google because most of the times they use the NIV or the NLT. This Bible, I mean, sorry, this book uses the NIV translation. So I can basically type in the scripture and it'll pop up exactly where it's from. And then I go in my Bible, read it, study it a little bit. Um, nothing too in-depth, just to understand the context. So I'm excited. I did try to start this book already yesterday on Sunday. Um, literally, I read the first page. Like... I tried. I marked it up and I tried, but I just, I couldn't do it because, one, I didn't have my camera, and two, I wasn't feeling good. Um, the enemy seems to be trying to come at me because I, he knows I have to speak out and I'm speaking to the youth, so literally Saturday, out of the blue, my throat started hurting. Sunday, I had this massive headache, and um, I was already nervous about the song I was dancing to, which if you guys received the Monday morning coffee for today, that song and that email was a song that I danced to. Um, on Sunday and it was amazing powerful song so Sunday was crazy and you know now my whole body hurts so he's trying to get me sick but he ain't gonna do it because I got church on Saturday I got church Friday and Saturday and then Sunday I'm preaching out and then I'm going to my church so I'll be going to three churches on Sunday church Friday and Saturday the enemy will not stop me but we ain't talking about that today we, we talking about this book so we, I, I really hope that this is a four-star read for me um I have high hopes only because I've seen a few people rave about it. Not too many people, but a few have raved about it. I haven't looked up reviews or anything like that as much as I want to. I'm going to try to get 50% of the way through and then check out reviews. Um, but initially, I had this set into a four-day vlog. Um, if you guys see one, two, three, and then the other part there. It was meant to be a four-day thing, but I'm probably not going to make it a four-day thing. Only because I have to finish it by Friday. Um, so I'm going to read up. I'm going to read chapters 1 through 10, hopefully within the next two hours before my son gets out of school. It's currently 12.58. Um, he gets out at 2.45, 2.55, so about 3 o'clock. Um, so hopefully I can read the first 10 chapters. And then when I come home, I'll come back and then read the next few chapters, which are going to be the next 10 chapters. So I think this is broken down into 10 chapters each, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see just about 10 chapters each so yeah i'm gonna try to read chapters 1 through 10 before i leave and then before i go to bed i'm gonna read chapters 11 through 20 and um yeah so let's dive in to this beautiful book and see what my thoughts are oh and also i have first of all if you guys have a local walgreens near you please check it out one thing i don't a lot of people don't know is that your local drugstores walgreens cbs and rite aid during the holidays and certain um certain holidays especially like winter and around fall they have really awesome like robes for gift like gifts gift supplies they have gifts basically robes slippers i know cvs has some bomb thick robes and i want to go get one actually i should check out cvs tomorrow i should do that but they have like robes and slippers at cvs rite aid normally has like blankets and stuff that's where i got um my blanket uh it was a pumpkin blanket that i had got from the last fall and then i went to walgreens on my fiance's house um and my son's father's house you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and I saw these mugs. Where's my other one? I think it's over here. Let me grab it. Um, okay. So I saw these two mugs. And originally they said $6.59. But I guess they were in the wrong spot. But they had a lot of cute like pink selections. Like so cute. But I saw these two mugs. And I saw what it said. And I saw that they were marbled. And they were curl kind of um, pearlescent or iridescent. Whatever the word is, I'll put it on the screen, that word. But they were really pretty. So, I snagged up two. I snagged up the pink one. And it says, my cup of tea. Um, and it comes with an infuser. Which, here is the white one. So, it comes with an actual infuser inside. Um, it's a really cool infuser. And, um, yeah, but I don't have the infuser in mind right now. You guys know what I'm sipping on. Do I have, do I have to tell you? <laughs> yeah, it's pumpkin spice. And um, for those of you who don't know, I am going to be doing... 10 book boxes for the holiday they will go on pre-sale in um december so i would say definitely check out and join the facebook group if you want to get in on that it's something that i want to keep running but i'm only going to start off with 10 just to see how it goes so it's going to be for 50 dollars, and basically i'm going to include a limited edition doi holiday shirt um, the shirt is going to be a red t-shirt with a design on it. So I'm working out the design now. Um, then you'll get one of my DOI mugs. I'll probably also pair it either with a white 
or do the red mug. I'm not really, I might do the red for the holidays, duh. Um, so we might do that. And then what else? So yeah, basically you get a limited edition DIY holiday shirt, which runs from, which is like the Christmas, New Year's kind of season type of shirt. Um, you get a DIY coffee mug, clear mug. Um, you also get two books. So there's four items right there. You're going to get one of my favorites is either going to be Cling or you're going to get Anywhere Faith by, um, Heather C. King. Those two are like my favorites. So you're going to get one of those books, my favorite book. You're going to get another Christian nonfiction book, um, something that I've read myself or I've had extras cop extra copies of because I have way too many books in this house, like way too many. And as much as I would love to do giveaways, it does get costly for me and me not working. It, it is kind of hard. So that's why I figured this book box would work. So you're getting a shirt, a mug, my favorite book, another Christian nonfiction. You're going to get three um, of my favorite teas, probably four, and the pumpkin spice will definitely be one. It's most likely going to be the pumpkin spice, um, lavender or gray. I'm probably going to throw in my French vanilla chai as well as the, um, honey lavender tea that I love to drink at night. So those four teas, I'm going to do four. I initially was going to do three, but I figured three kind of fall, win fall, three wintery teas and then throw two wintery teas throw in a morning tea and then an evening tea so you're gonna get four teas and then three bookmarks um i may throw in some additional things here and there i'm not sure like maybe get some washi tape throw it in there um maybe get some cute little journals and throw a pen i don't know yet i do want to make sure you're getting a bang for your buck um granted i mean fifty dollars you're basically only technically playing for the shirt and the mug pretty much um so, and then you get the other stuff technically free, but that's just something I wanted to do for the holidays. So that should be up for pre-sale in December. When I do have it ready, I will make a video video announcement for you guys. Um, cause I'm only going to make 10 of those right now because I have enough for 10, um, down the line. I may do it again during like the summer and then one more time next winter. So I may do it twice a year, do a cool book box with a limited edition shirt and a mug. Um, but that's what's going to happen. But tea ready i have my soup um because i'm cold so i'm eating some chicken noodle soup from campbell's and this is amazing so that's what's that so we're gonna dive in and i'm gonna come back after i maybe five chapters and i'll come back give you my my thoughts tell you guys how i'm feeling um but i'm predicting this will be a four star read predictions four star hopefully um but if it's higher than that great i really do love this cover though i got some on my cover but um, I really just love the colors and stars. Why did I not? Why did I not think of this book, you guys? When I did my my little tag video, this book has stars. Do you see all the little tiny stars on the spine and on the back? Stars, you guys. There's stars. But I, see, I forgot. I, I forgot I had this book. Honestly. And yeah, we we just gonna move on. So let's let's commence the reading. Okay, guys, I'm literally only, um, it says 12 pages, but I'm, I'm on page 12, but I'm only about one, two, three, four, five pages into the story, and, um, I'm already laughing because it's so funny. So this takes place, um, it, it already basically talks about the time that this takes place, so it takes place about the time that the, um, Hebrews were basically no longer exiled, um, Nebuchadnezzar is dead, and now King Her King Ahasuerus, who is basically Xerxes, um, is over King Nebuchadnezzar's land, and this is at the time when they are 70 years after the exile, so right before they are told they're free, and, you know, Daniel gets the news from his friends and his assistant named Ezreal, I think that's how you say that, um, that they are able to be free, so they're basically able to go home, exile is finished, so... Daniel begins to say, he says, never forget, it is the Lord who saves and his promises are sure, which I underlined that in green because I think that's something that we all need to remember. I know for me, when I'm going through something, I tend to forget all that God has promised and um, all that God is doing, even though I visually can't see it. And it's not that I purposely forget it. It's just that we tend to get caught up in the here and the now so much so that we forget who God is. And um, he is way much bigger, way much bigger. He is much bigger than our problems. So I had to underline that. But then, the, you know, bypassing that, um, so then his friend is talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're dead. And Daniel corrects them and corrects Ezreal by calling them by their um, Babylonian name. And, um, you know, he's really sad and stuff like that. So 
Ezra is like, well, something troubles you. The others were too lost in their joy to notice. So Daniel says, I'm not troubled. On the contrary, I doubt there is any man in Babylon whose heart is more joyful than mine. So what Ezra said next cracked me up because I'm just like, sometimes I think that's how I look to people. But he says, you have a strange way of showing it, old friend. Your heart neglected to inform your face. And for me, that's funny because it's like, you know, when you get good news and you don't show that you're happy, but on the inside you're happy. People tend to think that there's something wrong. And it's, it's not that it's something wrong. It just doesn't register on your face, your happiness. And for me, that tends to be the case when people look at me. Like, I know when I'm outside and walking about, and I can be good. I could be listening to some good music. But my face is very just, like, straightforward, don't mess with me type of face. And I'll randomly have, like, the random person be like, oh, smile. And it's not that oh, they'll say either smile or don't be so mean. And it's not that I mean mean. It's just that that's just the face that I've learned over the years to have. Even though I could be really excited on the inside and super stoked and all that, my facial expression will not, like, show that. So I thought it was funny, but it was also, like, I tend to do that as well. But, yeah, we're going to keep going. So up to Chapter 5 is, um, I'm trying to get to the page. That's going to be up to, I don't know, that's not the page I don't want. Try and get to the page. All right, that's going to be 60 pages. So, it's 120. I probably won't get there. Pro probably not. Um, so, we'll see what I can read before. Ooh, I'll say about 2 o'clock. I'll come back on camera, discuss what I read, and then I'll read from 2 to 3, 2.30, sorry, 2.45, and then tell you guys my other thoughts. So, back to my reading. Got my little sounds on, you guys know, nature. Probably can't hear it, but it's rain and thunderstorm sounds. Crackling fireplace for three hours. I'll just click the eye on the screen to go watch the video. Okay, guys, so I'm back home. Um, it's 3.09 right now, and... I heated my tea back up because I had one out the house. I'm going to have to heat it up again for another 30 minutes. Luckily, this is microwave safe. Thank God. Because a lot of the times when you get um things that have foiling on it, like this has gold foil on it. This here is gold foil. I don't know if you can tell, but it's gold foil on it. A lot of the times you can't microwave it, but you can microwave this. So I'm not sure if they put a protective coat around it to allow you to microwave, but it's microwave safe. And again, I got mines from Walgreens, so check your local Walgreens. And um, check your Rite Aids and CVSs as well. They have awesome stuff out during the holidays. I'm going to get me a robe from Rite Aid, actually. A nice fluffy one. But um, I did read up to Chapter 6. I'm in Chapter 7 now, right now. Um, not that many pages into Chapter 7, I don't think. Well, about four pages into Chapter 7. And I'm just going to tell you guys off the back, um, this is good. I am loving the writing. This, I believe, is the first book from Patrick W. Carr. And this writing has me so engrossed in it. I am loving it. So far, I am loving the characters. So, Chapter 1 started off with Daniel and um, him getting the prophecy from Gabriel and writing it out about the coming Messiah and the calendar and all that stuff. So then chapter two is 500 years later when they have the Magi already in kind of set in stone in a sense. And you have Myrad, who is a young, I can't even really call him a Magi in training because before he could become a, a, an official Magi accolade, um, something happened, which broke my heart ripped it out but um it starts off with him having a dream and then him talking with his father and it's not really his father gershim is his adopted father who's hebrew and myrad himself is persian which i think is interesting it's another one of those things where god is taking people who is not of his chosen um when i say chosen i mean the hebrews and bringing them into his family he has taken samaritan people he has taken some he's taken samaritan people he has taken um moabite people like it's interesting to read the old testament and when you read these books you're seeing it come together with god even though he has his chosen hebrew people the jews he also has a set people outside of them that he wants to bring into the family so to see that happen is pretty interesting um because he's persian so that's quite interesting um king ahazareth is dead um the new king is Harith or something like that. I don't know. It's some new king with a concubine named Musa or Musa who works for the Roman Empire and she is about to be the queen. Let me just say, Musa, Musa, her name is spelled M U S A. She evil. Oh my god. She's so evil. She is so evil and so twisted. I don't like her. I don't like her. Like at all. But um 
yeah so my rat something basically happened during the time of him becoming an official mad guy and they were slaughtered um just they, they was they were slaughtered like mercilessly like it's crazy um i'm just gonna say musa she's she's grimy she grimy too she's kind of like a jezebel to me oh my god controlling and just manipulative and just, oh she's annoying but um yeah so my rat was able to escape and then there was a scene i gotta read because it cracked me up so this is after the case um when everyone all the mad guy um are dead there's a reason why they're dead i'm not going to talk about that reason but it does have to do with Musa, musa whatever her name is but it has to do with her and um basically um, my rat is out there looking at all the bodies and he finally finds his father's body and he wants to get something that was inside of his father's sash or whatever it is but there are poor people kind of pillaging from the dead bodies so there are these two women arguing over something on his father and on his dead body um and then he notices the note so he's like i need he wants to pick it up but another one of the women picked it up and he's like i need that he said please he was my father this is what happens, and I marked it in blue because I'm angry and it makes me sad. The woman snarled and kicked Gershom's body, the blow rocking his father's head so that his dead stare barely, I'm sorry, his dead stare briefly caught the light. What do I care, the woman's back, dead is dead. I wanted to punch her on her face, like, just pow, one time, because that's rude. Like, I could never picture anybody going to kick a dead body. Like, yes, they're, like, like dead is dead, but there's also respect for that person's body even if they're dead like it's just respect as a human being so that alone just lets me know that these people in babylon are just like not human they're they're, they're evil right so then he goes grief exploded within him with his other hand he struck the woman across the face he slapped her again and again until she let go of the parchment and i marked that in yellow because that scene cracked me up i laughed but i also felt bad because one year a dude hitting on a girl well a woman, he's 19 years old hitting on a woman but at the same time, after what she did, if I was a boy, I probably would have did the same thing. She probably would have got punched, being honest. Like, if you kick in my dead father's body, and I'm like, he's my father, and you're trying to be petty about it, just because you want to steal something, it's a fight. Like, it's a fight. But, um, yeah, so he read the note. I'm not going to tell you. The note has to do with the coming travels that he's, the, the journey he's going to be on. But he basically has to go to Rage. I'm going to assume that's how you spell it. It's on the screen how you spell it. But, um... It's called Rage, I think. But, yeah, we have that. So then he meets um, a caravan, and the caravan is with, um, um, but no, he, before the caravan, he goes into the marketplace to get a horse, and then there's a guy named Eskander, 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 whatever. Basically, he's a merchant, um, but he comes to the realization that that merchant was paid to look at look out for him. So Musa, Musa, whatever this queen, the queen, I'm gonna just call her the queen, she has people keeping an eye on him. Um... Because basically she wants to kill him. Pretty much. She wants to kill him. Which is like, what? Um, so, yeah. He basically gets away, runs away. He follows until he finds a caravan ran by Wallagash. Which is the guy that's mentioned in the back of the book. And uh, I love Wallagash. Wallagash, his son. What is his son's name? Um, Roshan. I think that's his name. Yeah. Roshan Abin and Storana. So, um, Roshan is the son of Wallagash. Abin is one, another guy that works in their caravan. And you have a woman named Sortana. Now, I'm, I love Sortana. Sort, sort, Storana. Sorry, Storana. I think that's how you say her name. She's Samaritan, but she's kicked butt, you guys. Um, she had mentioned something about, like, in Samarita, um, women are encouraged to be warriors. In fact, a woman so trained is forbidden to marry until she kills her first man in battle. For, I don't know why I thought that was, like, hype. I read a lot of fantasy novels, and um, a lot of the times you don't find these strong women that know how to handle weapons. You find these weak women. So, reading biblical fiction, I never thought that they would have, like, a woman warrior in this. Granted, I know that Connie Lincoln definitely had one in, um, oh my god, what is the name of that book? Wings of the Wind, I think it is. Wings of the Wind. She had one of, like, a warrior, a, not a warrior princess, but a warrior in there. She was female. But I, I just didn't expect it elsewhere. And it, it's, she's kicked butt. I love her. So, Storana, I love her. Um, they all crack me up. I love Aben. Aben is very um, cool. Like, I love Aben a lot. Um, Roshan is very... He's a little stubborn. He's very protective of his father, which I love. But he's stubborn. But Wallagash, oh my god, I love him. I love him. I, 
I love all of that. But, um, whatever the case may be. So, as they're traveling, they almost get caught by the guards, um, the soldiers, rather, of Musa. They're looking for him, and Balagash asks him who he is. He tells him who he is. They go through this whole kind of spit, spit back, um, of a negotiation, which, let me just say, my red is a genius in negotiating. Like, you, there's a negotiation that he does. Okay, so Wallagash has this guy that he wants to negotiate with. What is his name? Esai, who's a silk merchant. And um, he's a Hebrew silk, mer sorry, silk merchant. Um, and Wallagash could never get a deal with him. So what got me is that my red was like, all right, take me with you. He said, whatever. He took him. So because even though my red is Persian, he was raised Hebrew, he knows about the Torah and the praying and stuff like that. So him and Essie automatically, Esai, oh, I think that's how you say it, automatically hit it off. So Esai really wants the Torah. He hasn't had a chance to have a copy of the Torah. Luckily, Myrad had his father's copy on him. So he gives his copy to Esai, Esai, whatever you call it. And um, in doing so, they he says, let's strike a three-way negotiation. He'll give the Torah to Esai if Esai puts my um Wallagash into the silk trade only if Wallagash lets um my red travel with him which my red's mind is insane like it's insane but yeah so chapter six we have all that going and then um they talk about who he is I, no i think they already did that yeah, this is when um, he tells Wallagash exactly who he is. And then Wallagash is like, well, damn. Um, excuse my language if anybody gets offended by the word damn. But, yeah. Um, but he's like, you're a witness to a slaughter that could divide loyalties in the empire. So, basically, they're after him. Like, they are on a hunt to find Myrad. They are on a hunt for this boy. Um, so, hopefully, he can get to his destination safely. His destination is a two-week travel. So, he's traveling with Wallagash's caravan to get to Rage whatever that city is called whatever um but in the midst of that they're they're followed by soldiers um because the soldiers are looking for him and like i said my rat has this deformity on his foot it turns it's like bent inwards or something like that so like you can notice who he is immediately by his limp and by his foot so the caravan helps him to kind of hide that but it gets to a point where they have to actually end up getting off the horse and he's terrified because he has to kind of walk straight and it hurts for him to do that and seeing him muster the strength to do that for so long like kind of like gutted me and then seeing the bonds that they automatically make like storana um she got off her horse and she was like you know what we'll be with you and if that soldier attacks you we will give him to the crows like she was ready she was about that life i love it storana she, i love her i lo i hope she stays throughout the story because i love her so much um but it's just, it's heartbreaking to see him struggle just to survive so that the soldiers don't know who he is and so they don't kill him. But I love how even though he just met Wallagash and them, they're so, like, loving and kind and helping him. Now, the way they had to help him kind of, like, it kind of made me mad, but I understood it. But it was like, damn, did you have to do that? So there was a scene where um Wallagash could see that he was struggling trying to walk because he's on the rear end of the caravan so Wallagash and his people are in the front so they already have the tent and stuff up so there's a certain point that they have to get to then he has to walk about 70 or so paces to the tent but he can't walk straight so you see him struggling so Wallagash intervenes and he calls him something else he calls him Jamshed or something like that and he's yelling at him but as he's yelling at him, my rat is finally understanding, okay, they're trying to help me, to cover me up, because these, these spies, in a sense, are watching him to see who he is so they can kill him. So he starts walking, and he's walking really slow, and he's starting to get slower because it's starting to hurt him, and he feels like he's going to drop. So Wallagash is completely just cursing at him, and not like cursing like our modern-day cursing, but like curse you and, you know, do this and do that type stuff. So it gets to a point where he literally can no longer walk. I think he's maybe 20 paces or so from the tent. 10 paces from the tent. And he can't walk anymore. So he's already walked about 60 paces in pain. Excruciating pain. So in his face, like the way they, the way it's written, you can kind of feel the emotion and the hopelessness in him. Where he's getting ready to give up. And right before he do that, right before he decides to give up, this man, Wallagash, decides 
to roll up on him. And I mean, he rolled up on him quick. Quick. Because where it says, he said, Wallagash was on him before he knew it. Before he knew it, oversized hand knotted in his tunic. So basically, it's like somebody jumping in your face and grabbing your shirt. But then he punched him in the face. I get it. Like, I get why he had to punch him to save his life, clearly. Um, but did, did you have to punch him so hard that his lights went out? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the writing. I'm loving the characters. So good. I think, like I said, definitely a four-star rating so far. I'm loving it. Um, some of my favorite quotes are, Courage, the life of any man is not without pain. Distraction helps, and that's true. In life, we're going to go through pain. We're going to suffer. But we can distract ourselves from the pain by um, focusing on God. And I know that sounds crazy to say, like, distraction. Um, but the way that it's written, that's how I'm explaining it. Another quote that I enjoyed was... Um, when my rat was like, well, I can't stay with you any longer. You know who I am. You know that the queen is after me, the king and everything. So, Wallagash is like, I'm not going to let your misfortune keep me from my dream. So amazing. I think a lot of people in this day and age, when you find out something about somebody, you automatically tend to cut off your relationship with that person. But a lot of the times, that person may be the key to you getting to your dream. Um, and you don't even realize it, but you automatically judge them off of what you've heard or what you've seen. And you don't take the time to really get to know them. So I love that he said that. I marked that in green. What else? Um, while Lagash, again, he said, life requires ruse, but flexibility as well. Again, phenomenal saying. Like, really some good parts in this book. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm into chapter 7. I'm almost done with that. Um, so once I'm done with chapter 10, I'll come back with my thoughts. Okay, guys. Let me just fix this camera a bit. So... Sip, come with my tea. But this, so good. So, so good. I've completed chapters 1 through 10. So, next I have to read 11 through 20, which I'm going to probably read maybe at 7 o'clock-ish. Really, really loving this. My Rad is such an interesting character. Um, Just learning about how he grew up and his background and then seeing... How he reacts to certain things is really interesting. I'm truly enjoying... Like, the writing is really gripping me. And as much as I want to, like, keep going, I'm going to pause on this so that I can pick up the other book that I have to read for review this week. Like, both my reviews are due on Friday. Actually, this book right here I have to review Friday and Saturday on two my two separate blogs. Friday, I think I have to review it on my Christian blog. And then Saturday, my book blog or vice versa, whatever the case. But both of these are due Friday. But I'm really, really enjoying this. Um, I am taking my time as far as, like, putting in tabs. I'm not sticking tabs on everything that I highlight or underline, rather. Like, I underlined here. I didn't stick a tab because I need to start saving my tabs. Um, my new tabs will be coming tomorrow. You guys know the story with um, these tabs that came in the box. So the new ones are coming tomorrow. Hopefully they're correct. They That one they sent from California. These they had sent from the Jersey warehouse of Amazon, so the other ones are coming from California. I can keep these though, according to the company. When I emailed them, they told me to just keep these anyway. And if the other pack is wrong, I can keep those those as well, and they'll send me another pack that's correct. So we have these. So I'm stocked up on sticky notes for a minute, um, but I'm truly enjoying the writing. It's really good. It's really action-packed i'm loving the journey aspect of it how he's going on this journey and he's interacting with these people at this point he has separated fr from wallagash because there is a guy another mad guy who came and oh he made me mad this mad guy made me mad because he said some stuff um well he's a mad guy that came that happened at like the beginning when things took place and he kind of warned um gershom and my rat to like leave and not to come to the palace to save their lives sorry if you guys hear my son be quiet okay anyways okay he's cleaning up but um yeah so it's like he he kind of reappeared but he's on a petty level like his level of pettiness so basically my rat ended up taking something from the um palace which was not supposed to be taken which is why Mu musa musa whatever her name is the queen and her people are after him for something that he took by accident which he didn't know that he took um which i think is funny and this mad guy had came he wanted it got it and then he betrayed my dude my rad so my rad is like 
he more bitter and more angry but it's gonna be interesting to see my red come from this angry bitter vengeance kind of place to him really learning more about god and letting go and understand that vengeance is god not man so i'm enjoying it so far this is really good definitely recommend it i'm going to come back later on after i read the next 10 chapters and um let you guys know my thoughts but so far i'm really really enjoying this a lot more than i thought i was going to um i mean well i said four star rating but it might be a five depending we'll see um i'm almost at the halfway mark so once i get to the halfway mark we'll see if it will be a five star read or if it'll just stay at a four maybe a 4.5 i don't know but i am enjoying it my rat is a very very diverse um intricate character i'm i'm loving I'm, I'm just loving it and the dreams he's having are the visions dreams visions however you want to say it they're they're quite intricate and they definitely foreshadow to some amazing things which i'm just like i need more but um i'm loving it so i'm gonna Mommy, pause here for now can I get give me a second oh grandma's room give me a second go back okay. in the kitchen close my door thank you oh, Give me a second. Bye. And this is what it's like having a kid trying to make videos. But luckily this is just a reading vlog and I don't have to worry about that. I can always edit it out if need be. But yeah, so we have this. I'm enjoying it. So I'm going to come back later on with my final thoughts on the first half of this book. And I am going to dive into the Piper's Pursuit. I'm probably going to end this vlog here and start another vlog for this book. Same day, I know. Probably a little insane to do that. But we'll see. But other than that, that is it for right now. Alright guys, so it is currently 9.21pm. Um, the same day, November 18th. And I finished the first half of The End of the Magi by Patrick W. Carr. And I know I kept saying that this was like his debut novel. It's not his debut novel. He has 10 other books out. But I believe this is his first biblical fiction. So I wanted to just state that and correct my um, wording on that. But this is his first biblical fiction. I believe his other novels are more fantasy based. This one is biblical fiction. And um, yeah, so I read up to page 196 halfway through with this book. Um, I just have to read the last half tomorrow. So the goal is to read this portion in the morning and this portion towards the afternoon. But this took a completely different turn and a twist. Um, and real quick, pay my son no mind. He is in the back right there watching the Nook on it. He's watching Netflix on my neck right now. So he might make sounds. I apologize. But um, this took a turn I was not expecting um especially concerning Roshan as a Roshan as a character which is um Walagash's son that there was a twist there that I was not expecting um but it also made sense because that's it was pretty commonplace but yeah um I love my red my red is amazing like he is just amazing just to see him be so human and transparent with his emotions and stuff i love it um what is this fool's name what is his name what is his name i gotta find it all i gotta do is find a blue tab right no that ain't it right here um my sister i can't who i can't, who I can't, who I can't stand him so he left the homie my red in the desert betrayed him and everything i mentioned that but then he shows back up and it's just like, really? And then he did some petty stuff that got me mad. Luckily, Wallagash was like really smart and figured it out. Wallagash's daughter, the romance with her and my rat, just my heart cannot contain it. But um, really, really good. Again, this is definitely one of those books that is more of uh, action packed because it's literally a journey you're going on. Most biblical fiction books that I read normally takes place in a set kind of location. You may move from one location to the next. But this one, you're actually traveling with my red through the time. And there is a map in this. I didn't show it to you guys at the beginning. But there is a map right here. So there is a map. So you can definitely see where they're traveling from. Um, yeah, they uh, they're actually talked about a lot of these names. Um, they were first in Hecate's... Tom Plos, they was first here, wherever this is here, um, hopefully you guys can see, they were first here, they went to Nisa, um, and then they went here where they met up, where, uh, he, my rat ended up meeting back up with Wallagash, um, the, 
the mad guy he met before. What is his name? I need to find his name, but I cannot remember his name right now. And it's irritating that I can't remember. I think it's Harum or something like that. He met him before and he pissed me off. Um, but he met up back with him and some other mad guy. And I believe there's only maybe no more than 10 mad guy left, including my sister, who I can't stand. Um, that's it. Like, those are the only mad guy. And um, there are some great things going on that I'm, like, loving. Again, the writing, the flow, the pacing of this book is so good. This is definitely more of an action-packed biblical fiction. Um, it's not like you're reading a Tessa Absher or, or a Connie Lynn cassette book where it's more slow pacing and you get things here and there. No, this is literally, like, bam, 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 bam. And for a fantasy lover like myself or a fast-paced reader like myself, I'm enjoying it. And the little bits and bobs of um, biblical truth and godly wisdom that pop up and then the romance i wasn't expecting like the <sighs> blew my mind so good um was not expecting it but it was good like so good um yeah it just it this book is so good i'm i'm enjoying it definitely sitting at a four four point five right now i'm not sure if i'm gonna give it a five star rating not many scripture references i think there was only one real two real scripture references um outside of like the beginning of the chapter but other than that that was pretty much all the scripture references i saw was at the beginning of chapter one and then i marked up two spots with scriptures other than that i'm not seeing any other scripture references but um i guess i could share with you guys some of my favorite quotes between chapter 11 to 20 so let's flip ahead okay so we're in this section so the first one I have, um, it says, I may not be one of the Magi. This was on page 127, right at the beginning of chapter 12. He says, I may not be one of the Magi, but I'm alive and I'm free when I had no right to expect either. I put a man preach it because a lot of the times we feel like we deserve things when we really don't. Um, and the fact that we're alive is a good thing. What you want, Bubs? Go in the refrigerator to get the water bottle. Sorry, I had to think about that. But, um, like, we're not, you don't, ex how can I say it? We're not expected to wake up every day. As much as we think we should expect it, it's based on God, um, whether he wants to wake you up in the morning or not. So, the fact that he said that really put things in perspective. And then, even before that, I used an uh, indigo tab and marked it in brown. Um, he said, why would God use a club-footed man to accomplish his ends? Why would the God of the Hebrews talk to a Persian? What well, arrogance no made him... Water. I'll get you some. Go ahead. Go lay in okay. the He said, um, why would the God of the Hebrews talk to a Persian? What arrogance made him presume to consider himself one of the elect? And he was, like, reflecting on himself and how God could use him. And I used to think like that myself. Like, how could God use me with the mess that I was in, with the stupidity that I, you know, did? And I now see how God is using me for his kingdom, for the advancement of his kingdom, um, and how he's using me to minister to women and to minister to men. And now I'm getting a chance to minister to youth now. And, you know, you... It, it, it made me personally think, because I used to think like that, like, what is God going to use? Like, how, how can he use me? Why would he use me? Why am I one of the, the chosen, you know? Um, so I felt like that was a personal kind of thing that I thought of. Um, and then we go into this thing where he meets, uh, this is at the, Hakam, that's his name. Um, after he met up with Hakam, he met up with, um, there was, okay, so it's Hakam, Dab, Elar, Mikal, Haral, Shimon, Ronin and Yedua, so Yehuda, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, including Hakam, that's eight, including uh, Myrad, that's nine. So yeah, there's only ten my guy left. But um, he's speaking to Yehuda, and they're basically acknowledging that he is a Magi, um, because they all had the same dream about the star. Um, and the star actually came into fruition where they can physically see it. And that was another twist with that star, which I thought was insane. Um, but he said, um, I'm going to read the paragraph that he said. So he said, the choice was wrong. Daniel's example was there before us. So was Nehemiah's. Serve with humility. Which I think a lot of people fail to understand is that when you're serving, no matter if you're serving at work, if you're serving in a church, if you're serving in a home, you need to do it with humility. Just because you're serving doesn't mean you're owed anything. Like, 
at all and i've noticed this especially in churches um i don't want to step on toes so i'm trying to figure out how to say this i know that people who have higher titles and i'm saying t this and this is personally why i don't like titles personally within ministry because people get pig-headed with titles but say you have a a first lady I'm going to just randomly use a first lady. And um, she's just a first lady of a church. She's not an evangelist or anything like that. She's just strictly a first lady. Some first ladies believe that um, they don't have to do anything in a church. They feel like they don't have to serve. And if they do serve, they want to be known that they, 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 that they serve. Um, there are some um, elders and some bishops and stuff who do things to be noticed. And it's like, are you serving for the right reasons? Even with lay members in the church who don't have a title... They only serve when they're getting recognized from their bishop or when they're um, pleasing man. And that's just, you, you serve with humility. Jesus served with humility. Like, he was God in flesh. Like, he was wiping dirty feet. Come on. Dirty feet. He was touching the lame, healing the sick. Like, he was humble in every sense. I mean, he was chilling with prostitutes now. Come on. I, I'm trying to get to his level where I feel like I could... And when I say chill, I don't mean like really hang out, but like where I can be in the presence of prostitutes um, and speak with them, you know, on like a human level. And I hope you guys get what I'm saying, because not a lot of the times when we see people who are like homeless or poor, we tend to not treat them as if they're human. And um, when you do that, you have this sort of prideful arrogance about yourself and you forget to be humble. So I thought that was awesome. But um, he further goes on to say that Gershom, like the rest of us, confused service with allegiance. And I thought that was interesting. Um, he said he wanted to save the empire from Musa's influence, but empires can't be saved. They come and are washed away by the inexorable tide of history. They will be replaced by empires that will fall in turn. The empires of men are transient and ephemeral as do but god's kingdom will last forever another good thing um then further on in the book they said um that they thought it was better not to assume god favor and i think that's important because a lot of the times when we receive the favor of god we think it's then okay to do anything because we assume that we're automatically going to get that favor from god but in reality just because you receive the favor of god 20 times and doing something doesn't mean the 20 the 21st or 22nd time you're going to get that same favor from god um so it's important to never assume anything about god it doesn't matter how many say how many times he saved you how many times he's healed you like don't assume something especially if you're purposely doing something or unintentionally purposely doing something and when i say unintentionally purposely doing something it's like you know you're not supposed to do something you're not doing it purposely you're doing it unintentionally but you know you're not supposed to do it so therefore it's technically being done purposely and i know that sounds crazy but i hope you guys understand what i'm saying so i thought that was interesting um this right here dove another one of the magi was speaking to my rat and he said stop dressing your fear and logic and arguments that don't mean anything that right there was like damn stop dressing your fear and logic there's nothing logical about fear if you really think about it you're meant to have faith um faith is not logical so why would fear be logical um it's more of a mental thing with us that we end up fearing things mentally um and i know someone's gonna take that and be like no that's wrong but honestly think about it from a spiritual standpoint just saying um anyways <laughs> i think there was one more thing i wanted to talk about okay so then um the scene with the star i'm not going to talk about it but there was something about the star that i thought was interesting that came to light and um i'm, I'm not even gonna read this quote i can't read it because if i read it i'm gonna spoil that part about the star so um i'm really really enjoying this, this book is really really good and um, i really want to finish it tonight like i really do but i'm gonna stop i updated both my goodreads accounts i'm gonna put this book to the side i did not start <laughs> the piper's pursuit i'm just gonna start this tomorrow after i complete this book um just because i don't want to overwhelm myself and i have a lot of stuff to catch up on um i didn't do any sermon writing like i said i'm not gonna do sermon writing until wednesday so i'll get back into doing that vlog for that but yeah um i did watch morgan tracy j's video today um it was 
the second video in her ministry vlog series that she has going on when she does a behind the scenes series of running her ministry and um some other stuff that she said in her video was very inspirational to me and i i have fallen off completely with keeping up with my planners um literally terribly um just because i've been like all over everything is all over the place and i have so many planners and i love planning planning is my thing it's my jam but um they've just been sitting in this corner collecting dust um so i need to get back into planning and making sure that i'm sticking to that planning because planning keeps me organized and i'm not organized if i'm not planned if i don't have things written down on paper they will not get done so I need to go back to doing a to-do list. I need to go back starting tomorrow, getting up at 5.15 like I do. My alarm actually goes up at 5.11. I purposely set it for 5.11 because it'll take me four minutes to like fully wake up. So that means 5.11 I get out of the bed. Um, my alarm goes up at 5.11. By the time I get out of my bed to hit the alarm, it'll be like 5.12. Stretch a little, 5.13, and then go in the kitchen, get me some coffee, and then come to my desk. I haven't been doing any devotionals like it slacking um i will be actually reading sorry you guys have a son i will be reading this book um i haven't even been doing john like i said i wanted to which is another story but i will be um diving into this it's called the day by day through the gospel of john it's compiled and edited by lance wobbles wobbles i don't know but it's basically a devotional that goes through the, the gospel of john it's a 365 day devotional that goes through the gospel of john from chapter one to chapter um 21 and i don't know if they do this verse by verse or a few ver I, oh wow okay 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 i like this so it doesn't necessarily go verse by verse, but it picks a few verses and focuses on those verses. And um, you have different people who write in it. So I'm going to start this um, probably tonight. I don't know if I can finish what I want to do tonight. Um, I'll probably start this or I'll start it in the morning. Because you guys know we're going to be diving back into John. And I'm really considering how I do the Bible studies um, because I know a lot of you guys you're not a part of the Facebook group, so you don't get to see the live sessions. And when I upload the videos onto YouTube, um, because Facebook Live has this weird kind of... They don't have autofocus. The camera can sort of get out of focus at times. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this because I personally love doing the live Bible study sessions in the Facebook group. But then I know you ladies here on YouTube have a problem watching it because sometimes the visual goes in and out. So I have to figure out a way I can do this because, again, I do these live sessions for an hour in the Facebook group. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure things out. Or if I do the live sessions in the Facebook group and then do a different type of video for YouTube. But again, I also know a lot of you ladies enjoy the step-by-step -step process of studying the Bible with me because it feels more personal. So I'm trying to figure out a way to work around that um, without it being a problem. I may have to record on two separate cameras, like um, have my actual camera recording me as I'm on the live video, if that makes sense. That way when I give you, when I do upload, it'll be a focused view. I might have to do that. Um, that might have to be what I do, though it'll be a problem if the battery dies on me. So again, I have to figure that out. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I'm done. Um, so tomorrow, we'll finish up with that beautiful book. And um, I'll see you guys in, in the morning. Hey guys, so it's November 19th. It is currently 10.42. Um, I had went out to the post office, dropped off a package to be sent out. And then after that, I had went to Rainbows to try to find a skirt. But the ra I have two Rainbows by me. There's like Main Street that I can go to and then on Main Street there's like one by ShopRite so I went there they didn't really have anything in there except for like sweaters and coats and jackets and that's not what I was looking for and the skirts that they did have just were not um yeah I didn't like them so that was a flop however I did go to ShopRite and picked up the tees that I need to include inside of the book box so I'm adding a 15 We'll see because I really want to include the Yogi um, Honey Lavender Tea, but I haven't been able to find that one for a minute. 
So if I can't find it, there will still be four tees. Um, but I decided to add in this Lady Grey tee right here. This is, um, I'm trying to figure out a way to say it. I feel, basically, in my head, it's basically like Earl Grey tea with citrus. Um, but that, that doesn't make sense either. So, um, it's black tea with orange peel, lemon peel, and then other citrus flavors. So, on the box, it says, Uniquely Ours Delight in the Refreshing Citrus Flavors of This One-of-A-Kind Tea. This tea is really good. I've, I've had it before. I've added creamer in it. The Cold Stone International Delights um, Sweet Cream Creamer. Really good. Really great morning tea. Um, I enjoy that. Of course, I said I was adding in the infamous pumpkin spice, so... We have the pumpkin spice tea that I'll be adding. My Earl Grey with lavender um, is basically bergamot black tea leaves with lavender, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm trying to find what it says on the box. Yeah, black tea, bergamot, and lavender. Um, so good, so delicious. Smells just, oh, it's great. Great for the morning. Um, and the last one I bought is the French vanilla chai from Twinings. Um... So, I think these are all twinings except for the pumpkin spices, Bigelow, um, as you guys can see. So, I did end up buying that. Each of them come with 20 in a box, so I have enough for the 10 um, boxes. So, again, you're going to end up with 4 or 5. If I can find that honey lavender tea, it'll be 5. If I can't, then it'll be 4. Um, four black teas, basically. Four, well, 3 black teas and a chai tea. Um, wintery kind of drinks that keep you warm and get you going in the morning kind of stuff. Um, so I have those. I'm going to work that out. There's 20 in the Twinings, and then the Bigelow only has 18. So I'm actually going to take out eight of these from here and then go through the others and take those out. Only thing I have to do now is buy the mugs, which I'm going to probably do tomorrow. I'll probably go to Dollar Tree and pick up the mugs. But um, this morning, I did get a chance to read five chapters of the book. So I read chapters 21 to 25 and um it's quite interesting. I don't I don't know how to explain myself. So I'm going to try to flip to the page that I need to flip to. Okay. So um chapter 21 is basically my rat just learning to ride the horse and um him also learning to shoot his bow. Um and I believe that's when they find out that the king Faradis is dead. Musa and her son has basically killed him. Now her son is over it. So basically Rome has completely taken over Parthia. Par Parthia? I think that's how you say that. Parthia. Um, yeah, Parthia. So the reign of Parthia is under Musa and her son. So that's insane. And then I think in chapter 22 there is a there's a lot going on because now her men are... Musa's trying to build a Parthian infantry um, for war. So she's going to all the caravans and if they have guards, she's forcing the guards to be a part of the infantry, which is crazy. So Myrad, Walagash, and Masista Mas Mas are trying to hide and stuff like that. They do hide in the forest, but Myrad gets stuck in the, the floodgate of the ravine and he ends up going to the lands of another prince. I don't even forgot the, the prince's name. Um, I'm trying to figure it out. Because literally chapters 22 and 23 is like him fighting with the god dad on um, water. It's like funny. Uh, but I can't... It's the, the, the prince of Harsinia, I believe that's how you say it. So, you know, he deals with that. And then he ends up at the end of chapter 23 having to join the army of Harsinia, if that makes sense. And then 24, it's just him helping them out. Um, and then they go back to the, the, the prince. The prince is Aaron... What is his name? Artabanus. Artabanus? Artabanus? I don't know. But they end up helping the prince. And then in chapter 25, he gets reunited with um, Wallagash and the crew. Um, and then 26, they're preparing to, again, leave to go to Armenia. Um, and stuff like that. So it's pretty much literally straight up journeying through um, and I don't know how I feel like I definitely am gonna I'm, I'm like thinking for a star but I don't know 
I'm enjoying it, but now I'm, I'm I'm at that point into the like the middle of the book where it's just like all right, they're journeying, they're journeying, they're journeying, and something happened. Like I need something to take place. Something needs to go down. Something got to pop off. Um, cause I'm I'm like getting a little just just a little bored. Now don't get me wrong, the journey is very interesting. I love all the characters, but after some time that gets boring and you want more so that's kind of the syndrome i'm having right now is like middle book syndrome with this journey it's just like can we get somewhere or something so and i'm i'm just over my sister and i'm over musa and i'm just i'm over over it all i'm, I'm just annoyed i'm over it so those are my feelings right now um i'm going to read up into chapter 32 I'm on chapter 26 or 27. I'm on chapter 26 right now. So, um, I'm going to read those chapters and then come back with my thoughts. I'm very tired. A little hungry. Um, but I have me some water, so I'm going to drink some water. And, um, get my life together. Okay. Okay, guys. So, I read up to chapter 31. Um, page 295. And, um, I'm still at a four right now. Four star rating. Um, like I said, the journey portion was starting to get dull for me. Um, right now they're dealing with King Herod. This is at the time that the Messiah is born. Jesus is born. Um, the star has now moved. And Herod wants to, in essence, kill the messiah we know the story of king herod how he tried to kill the baby joseph got a dream from god told him to run and he ran and blah 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 we know that so that's pretty much where we are right now and um i'm still enjoying the writing i'm just not as like pulled in i feel like the first half of the book was really really good really epic really fast paced and then right up until the moment that they get separated with the whole ravine and the floodgate situation it starts to just really go slow and just drag for me and i don't like when books do that and i have this same problem with other fantasy novels um that i've read that they'll start off really fast paced and then slow down towards it and it's just like why would you do that i would rather you start off slow and then end fast then start fast and slow or just be fast throughout the whole book that's just me i like a fast paced read um so i don't know um it's good I'm, I'm not saying it's not good but for the first half of this book i was so here for the journey and now we're towards the end and i get why i guess it has to slow down because it's the messiah he's born and all that great stuff but um yeah, i don't know <laughs> So I'm definitely out of four star already right now. I need to actually update my Goodreads right now. I'm on 295. I'm not even going to post anything. I'm just going to update the page count to 295. But I have how many pages left to go? I have about eight chapters left. And that is a total of how many pages? I'm actually calculating this right now. 82 pages left, 8 chapters. We'll see. Um I'm just this last this last this last bit is just dragging and you can definitely tell where it started to drag for me. Um because you can see the difference in like the post-its that I have. So the first half posted crazy right and then the second half is just like where are you and i only put purple posters because those are different chapters that have actual scriptures but um the first half i was here for it but the second half is a little sparse so we're gonna finish it up today it's 11 18 right now um so i'm gonna keep reading hopefully i can read it before 12 and then i can eat something um and then i can start my next read that I need to start before Friday, but, um, pretty much a four-star read for me, Pr pretty much. We're gonna see, though, I'm gonna see how it ends. Maybe the ending will have, like, this big twist that I'm like, yes, but 
it went from a four star to a 4.5 to back to a four star so um it's cool you know i don't know i just i don't know i don't know what's missing maybe if they would have added more of the romance towards the second half it would have been cool because like there were the, these cute moments with um Myrad and his betrothed but you don't get much of it and I feel like the second half definitely should have had just a little bit more romance to it especially after there was a near-death experience for Myrad like come on um but yeah right now they're dealing with King Herod so chapter 32 I'm gonna finish reading and hopefully I can finish by 12 I'm gonna see what I can finish by 12 and then I'll read the rest before I get my son so back to reading and I'll I'll probably actually insert some clips of me reading at this point so yeah guys so it's 12 21 um i had already finished reading at like 11 50 something but i was on the phone with my son's father um but i'm done with the end of the magi by patrick w carr and i'm going with a solid four star rating for this book just <sighs> the last third of this killed me um only because i feel like I don't, I don't want to say it without sounding rude, but I feel like, all right, um, I'm going to show you guys what I mean at first. And so you guys know purple means scripture, like actual scripture. So you can see there's nothing but purple here. Nothing but purple, okay? Nothing but purple in the last third of the book. Um, the first half, very fast-paced. Loved it. Enjoyed it. I loved the whole journey. Once you got to the halfway mark, the journey slowed down a bit. Then he got lost. It got separated from the group and then something with the ravine and the water and he ended up having to work for the, the prince of another place I don't know like the writing I st like the writing is amazing I love the writing the writing is phenomenal but for me just the last half definitely that last one third it was scripture heavy and what i mean by that is um it's not bad that it's scripture heavy obviously biblical fiction should contain scripture however i feel like that was an easy cop out um to ending the story it was just like okay we're gonna now move 21 years later he has a 21 year old son he got a 9 10 year old son him and roshan are good he's still a magi he's still a magi but he's also a silk trader and then they go to jerusalem because now jesus is 30, 30 33 years old about to be crucified then he's crucified and then okay that's the end what <laughs> um it just felt like a major cop out like that, that that's really all that i can say it felt like something was missing like what how did that like we just read that roshan was like she don't want no kids because of the caravan life is not for children and then you skip 
mad years later and Jesus is now 33 years old about to be crucified and Roshan and Myrad has has kids like what like most books they at least give you that kind of flow of pace this was just like all right meet baby Jesus don't go back to King Herod because he's gonna kill baby Jesus let's go about our separate ways and then boom up 21 years later he, he has a 21 year old son 9 10 year old child and everything and I'm just like bruh what so I don't know four stars definite I love 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 the first half the second half was a 50 50 for me like I enjoyed the first half of the, the last half but that ending just purple taps just straight scripture and it's just like why did you just just bum rush us with a whole bunch of scripture like why and I think that for me what bothers me more so is that even throughout the book there was not a lot of scripture as you guys can see on this on these you don't see any purple right no purple you I have two purple tabs because one chapter starts off with um a scripture from Daniel and then you have the prophecy that Daniel had got so that's that and then it's like bam um, I didn't enjoy that I, I really didn't enjoy that part of this however I did enjoy my red as a character I love me some while ago she is amazing um Roshan just amazing um I probably spoiled it for you guys concerning Roshan now that I think about it with what I just said but whatever um, if you guys weren't paying attention during the video or forgot what I said in the previous clips, that's great. So then you won't be spoiled. But, um, yeah. And then Masistus, Masistus, I think that's his name, he comes back at the end and it's like, oh, happy-go-lucky, let's be a family of Magi, Magi, Magus, whatever. <sighs> like, like I said, I knew it was going to be a four-star rating for me. Um, because it just sounded really interesting and I wanted to know more about the Magi. Um, I will say there was a scene when the three Magi had went to, you know, gift the gifts to the baby Jesus. My red was one of them. Um, so I thought that was cool. But other than that, I mean, it was literally like rushed towards the end for me. And I mean, not like fast paced, but like straight up rushed, took scripture out, wrote some like two paragraphs around the scripture, do another scripture, wrote a few paragraphs. It was just like, bam, 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 bam. Why? You giving me Matthew, you giving me John, you giving me Acts. Like, I'm going to need you to, you know, give me a linear type of, you know, I don't know. But I enjoyed it. Like, I, I'm not, okay. I'm not saying this wasn't a good book. I enjoyed this book. Four stars. I mean, it went from a four star to a four and a half to a four. I'm only giving it a four because I don't understand. I don't. Can you see my tabs, guys? I don't know if you guys can see. Like, where else do you see purple at besides the beginning? Like, I don't. I mean, besides the end. That is why I'm giving it a four star rating. It would have got a four and a half depending if if that if those last few chapters were written differently. I could see me giving it a four and a half, but because the way the last chapter just, no. Mm -mm -mm. But do I recommend the story? Yes, I do. It is a fun read. I think it's awesome. It is very action packed and comical. My Red, again, is a very dynamic character. I love him so much. But my final feelings, four star rating. So that is it for this reading vlog, you guys. I will have a link to this book down below for Amazon, Goodreads, all that great stuff. Did I say Goodreads? I meant to say, um, christianbook.com but i will also throw both my goodreads reviews down below um as well as my blog review because by the time this video goes up the blog review would have already been posted so yeah um that is great apple juice um but yeah i finished my soup so i am going to get some work done on the computer and then get me a cup of tea but that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, rating, commenting, subscribing, and all that great stuff. If you are not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to this lovely family of mine. And if you are subscribed, hit the bell to stay notified. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!